Welcome to the Curator's Salon. I am Gita Joshi and today my guest is Danielle Prahl, a business mentor. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Really excited to have you here because we're going to have one of the conversations that we've had um, offline and all that sort of thing around mindset because I thought this would be a really interesting conversation to bring to my audience, particularly the artists, around the mindset of well, both oftentimes changing careers for those people that have transitioned into artwork later in life, but also sort of around um, receiving and the mindset around selling as well. Yeah, I think that's a huge thing um, in any industry, but especially when it comes to art, I think that's a, a big one. Um, and, you know, I've worked with a lot of different people in different industries, and I think one of the main things that everyone struggles with is mindset. And I think that's why it's such a good topic because it really does touch every area of your life, especially when it comes to success in business. So when clients come to you when they're stuck in their business and they just sort of, you know, they're, maybe they're stagnant, what, what is this, what's the advice that you give them generally? Yeah, usually I just ask why, like what's going on with them. And it's an interesting thing. A lot of times we think that our lives, our personal lives or our relationship or our finances and our business or us as parents are all separate things. And we try to compartmentalize them. But I've really found that they all kind of reflect each other. So if you're having a hard time setting boundaries in life, you're probably having a hard time setting boundaries in your business. If you're not able to receive in your relationships, you're probably having a hard time receiving in business. So I really just ask like what's going on with them, kind of where they're stuck. Um, and then I really want to help them paint a picture and dream again about like where is it you actually want to be? What does that look like? What does that feel like? Um, if you could wave a magic wand and have anything happening in your life and business, what would it really be? Because if you don't know where you're kind of going, um, you don't really have a roadmap to get there. And I think a lot of us know what it is we want and where we want to go, but we're kind of afraid to ask for it. So we stop ourselves from really going there and painting that picture, if you will. And what do you find is often the obstacle to like, taking action on those desires like for example an artist that wants to work with galleries or license their products for example I mean that's you know my industry but mm -hmm. what do you find are the main sort of um, obstacles that they come up against in the, action, think, in the action? I think fear um, they think who am I to do this I'm not good enough that person has more experience um, you know, the titles, we've talked about this, like maybe they haven't given themselves the title yet of whatever kind of artist they are. Um, they've never done it before, so they're afraid to make the first move or the first step. And then it seems so complicated that a lot of times we just dismiss what we want to do and never take the action. For example, like you said, an artist that wants to have their work in a gallery, they're too afraid to you know, step up and take the action as that level of themselves because they're still in one place even though they want to be at the other. And so often we're waiting for something to happen to be able to take that step, like someone to knock on our door and give us our title or give us permission or say that we're, you know, like I, I don't work in the art space world, but I'm sure they want someone to come and be like, you are an artist, you're worth this, you're worthy of it. And no one's ever going to show up and do that. And if they do, that's fantastic, but it rarely happens, right? No one's gonna show up and tell us we can go for it. So it's really about empowering ourselves to take those steps and take those actions. I mean, you think about it, life is incredibly short and we're the only ones that often hold ourselves back from getting what we want um, and we, sometimes getting that victim mentality that like, oh, that person had it so much easier or they were just lucky or they had the right family or of course they did because they're so-and-so and they have connections or whatever. But it's like we all have those same opportunities. It's just about really taking the steps and taking ownership and getting your mind in a place where you're empowering yourself to go after what you want. Gold. So many <laughs> truth bombs in there. Yeah, but it's true. I mean, really, in any industry, everyone struggles with these same things. And often you think once you have the success or you have what you're going after, like the artist, when, when I get in the gallery, I'll have made it and I won't struggle with this anymore. And it's like, no, it's actually a continual 
problem that we all face in any level of success. And that's why I think having a mindset practice, like so many of us have an exercise regime, right? Or we go to yoga or um, we work on our spirituality, uh, we work on our nutrition, whatever that may be, but we don't have a mindset practice to keep our head in the game. Um, and I think that's something really important that everyone can incorporate on a daily basis. You have to do the exercises. I mean, the fears don't go away. You just learn how to move through them faster at every level. I think what you said about the starving artist idea is quite, I mean, it's quite the myth because like social media has really changed that landscape for people to reach their audiences directly. But yeah. you know, a lot of this comes from other stories that we might have been told that, you know, artists don't make a good living or that it's not a good career choice, for example. Right. It's funny if you look at children because they're like so confident in everything that they do and they, they just go for things, right? And then we're told our whole lives like, oh, no, don't do that. That's not safe, blah, blah, blah. And I think it's from well-meaning adults and we can't dwell on our childhood forever, but really we're conditioned to not be fully ourselves our whole lives. And really the number one way to be successful is to go back to fully yourself, right? But we're told like, oh, art isn't a stable career path. Um, I know that's probably from people who are well-meaning, but there is really no stable career path anymore. Um, we can actually, for the first time in our lives, have the entire world as our audience, right? And we can sell to literally anyone. It's just about finding those people who connect with you and your story and speaking directly to them. So I think that that mentality really is a myth because there is no security anymore. And even if there was, it's, it's a false sense of security. But now with the digital world, you really can take ownership of yourself and your business and your art and your work. And it's just really up to you to take that stand and make sure that you're promoting it the way that you want and connecting with people and letting them know who you are and the story behind what you do. And that's really what people buy into is us. And so often we hide ourselves or we hide behind what we do instead of really telling that story, which is what gives it um, its specialness. That's what people connect with. I mean, I think even talking about the starving artist mentality as artists is huge. Like, you know, talking about that process in your work and saying that, you know, you are conditioned to think that you can't get paid well for what you create because it's something that you inherently have. It's a gift, right? You don't, you can go to school and refine it, of course, but you, a lot of people are born with it. So they're like, who am I to get paid for what it is I do naturally well? And I know we talked about this. Um, so often you think that you have to go through some sort of struggle or some sort of schooling or some sort of whatever to be able to ask for money for things that you do naturally when actually that's your number one gift that you should be compensated well for. And I think this is something that actually leads into um, the practice of, you know, strengthening that sort of worthy muscle or whatever we might want to call it. It's yeah. about actually, you know, owning that gift and owning the title that you give yourself as an artist, a painter, a, you know, illustrator, whatever that is. Yeah, just, you know, really recognizing that that is the value that you're bringing into the world. Yeah, I think so often we forget that we are valuable just as we are on this earth with everything that you have. That's what makes you unique and special and valuable and worthy of your desires, worthy of your dreams, worthy of being massively compensated for it. And we often think that there's some sort of badge of honor to go through the struggle, right? When actually there's nothing honorable about that. It's incredibly toxic. Um, you're supposed to be paid well for your gifts. And I work with a lot of different people as entrepreneurs who struggle with this sort of thing. I mean, like I said, we all do, but there's actually a practice I feel like you can go through to empower yourself on a regular basis, which is, it sounds super basic, but people always talk about the next level version of themselves or the 2.0 version or, or that um, up, upgrade, up level, right? it's like, well, what does that mean? Practically for me, it really means sitting down and getting really crystal clear on what that version of you is. How do they think? How do they act? What emotions do they feel? And then spending as much time on a daily basis feeling those emotions, um, starting to change your mindset to think that way. And that's actually how you get there. It's by showing up in the now as that future version. And so it's like, 
I really think like, would the version of you who's doing what you want and has the confidence and has the stuff in the galleries, are they afraid to, you know, stand up and claim their power or ask their, their price? Would they be afraid to make connections and talk to people? No, they wouldn't be, but you're trying to get somewhere operating with the past um, sort of stories and thought processes. And it's like, if you just step into that person now, because you are that person, right? Like you are that person, then people respond to you from that level. But if you're asking for permission and you don't have the confidence and you're tearing yourself down mentally, then you're defeating yourself before you've even, even taken a step. So by like for me personally, I have a daily practice of journaling where I go through, you know, what's kind of coming up for me. And then I say, is this true? You know, like, oh, I'm terrified of this, blah, blah, blah. And the answer just like, you know, as a secret is always no, right? It's always no. If it doesn't feel good, it's not true. So then I always go with the opposite. Okay, well, if I was showing up as this other version of myself that I, I am now, I have access to it now then how would I react? How would I respond? How would I show up? What verbiage would I use? And I found when we go through hard times and we're in the struggle, it can be really hard to see on the other side of it. But if you start using even just the language with other people as an empowered person, um, you start approaching people in a different way, you start putting your gifts out there in the world in a different way, it's amazing how much more people respond to it because they can feel the energy behind what you're saying and feeling and thinking. And that doesn't mean you don't have those down moments maybe, but it should be a daily practice to get yourself in that space as as much as possible when I've tried this it really works for me I you know I find I can respond to queries that my you know myself two years ago might have been floundering over that suddenly sort of thinking of who I am or the next level version of myself or my business or whatever then you know everything just comes so much more simply and it's with so much more ease and grace yeah, it's a lot simpler. And I think that difficult really is a decision, right? Like maybe the things that happen to us in our life aren't our fault, right? Or we don't necessarily have control over them, but we do have control over how we respond to them. And I've found that most of the people that I've worked with, I've worked with a lot of very successful seven figure, multiple seven figure entrepreneurs. And I always was wondering in the beginning, like what makes them different? And it's like they just believe that they can and they have zero room for the noise that allows them to doubt or think that it's not worth it or that they aren't worthy of it. And they're like, of course I can do that. Of course people want to pay me for my gifts. Of course, like that's just the way that they think and operate. So I think the more that you can operate from that place, the easier things get. And it's not about being rude or mean to people or putting others down. It's about being fully present in that version of you that wants everyone to rise together and can claim your own power and respond that way. And it does make things so much easier. I mean, it can take you years and you can hustle and grind, or you can just start operating as that person now and everyone else responds to it and everything happens a lot easier. And faster as well, actually. That's one of the things I've noticed with that is you get to that place where things just like pick momentum really fast. Yeah, I like to call it slipstream time hacking. <laughs> Because it is, it's true. It's almost like you're just picking a different lane. You know, you can do the hard one that takes you a really long time. But like I said, if you if you operate from that next level now, the world has no no choice or option but to respond to it accordingly. Um, but no one's going to come, like I said, knock on your door and hand it to you. You kind of have to claim it yourself. And it doesn't have to be difficult, but just making it that practice, almost like you're exercising or, you know, whatever it is you do on your daily basis, if you make it a practice and implement it, I mean, you can listen to great podcasts all day long and you can read the best books and you can have a great mentor who tells you stuff, but until you actually implement it and take the action, um, things stay very stagnant. And I always tell people like it's almost about taking action before you feel you're ready. People will be like, oh, well, I have to learn this first or I have to do that first or even with art, like maybe I have to, you know, do X, Y, and Z first, whatever that path may be. And it's like, no that thing that you're scared to do, that's what you should be taking action on now. Incredible. So I know you have some journaling prompts for our audience. Where can they get that? 
Yes, that can be found at danielleprawl.com forward slash journal. Um, and they're just my actual daily journal prompts that I kind of go through to empower myself to really get to that next level. And I think that anyone can really use that, start to implement it. And it does feel weird at first, but <laughs> if you just keep doing it, I promise you'll be like, wow, this is actually pretty incredible. Amazing. I will add a link to that in the show notes. Thank you, Danielle. Where can people find you online? Well, you can go to my website, of course, which is danielleprawl.com, or you can always follow me on Instagram, which is the same name, Danielle Prawl. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Danielle. It's been amazing talking to you as always. Thank you for having me.